okay, this morning a student stopped by, asked me this question over here. I did make a mistake. I want to rectify the mistake. One of the mistakes I make is I, I don't think, and I'm guilty of it. And I always say it's like the smoking gun principle. You know, if I see someone holding a smoking gun, hey, that's the murderer, right? And that may not be true, by the way. So I'm going to say I'm guilty of the smoking gun principle. So if I were seeing this problem over here, the first thing I would recommend is uh, write in terms of sines and cosines. And this is what I recommend. Now, this is where I stop my thinking, and I just proceeded forward as if there were no troubles in the world. But there are troubles. The obvious should always be pointed out to me. So I'm going to say the obvious here is the cosine of theta cannot be equal to zero. And I know when that does occur, by the way. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine of theta. And what do you get? You get sine of theta plus the cosine of theta equals... One. Gee, that's nice. And I'm going to say there's many ways to proceed over here, but I, I want to proceed in two different ways. And, and the first way I'm going to do is just a visual understanding of the problem over here. And I want to write this over here. Sine of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of theta. Let me put some parentheses on those arguments, all right? And I'm going to graph it. And someone says, why do you graph these things? It, it's good to be able to visualize a problem. And I'm going to put the sine function. It looks sort of like this. And I also want to graph out 1 minus cosine theta. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to kind of remind you the cosine theta looks like this over here. It's just a rough picture. And minus the cosine, this is the cosine theta. Minus cosine theta would look like this. And then if I did you know, the next one, which is 1 minus cosine theta, it would look like this over here. All right, not so bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to kind of draw that in now, and maybe I'll use a different color. So we got, you know, it starts here. Um, it goes up to something like this over here. And let's see, it ends over here somewhere. Oh, boy, i got to do something else here, don't I? Like this over here. Then it comes back down. I know I'm not very good at drawing, by the way. But I, I do notice that there's there's... Definitely two points of intersection, all right? Now, I want to write it down, and it's just a visualization. I know it's difficult, and we're not saying that everyone's at this level. Uh, we're not at this level. I mean, we're, we're at different levels, and even your teacher's at different levels. Let me just see if I get the um, back to my black ink. So I'm going to say it looks like, just looking at the picture, it looks like theta could be, um, you know, looking at it, this is 0 and then 2 pi. It looks like it keeps hitting. So I'm going to say 2 pi. It's a multiple of 2 pi. And this one over here, someone says, I wonder what that is. Well, that looks like theta equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. All right? Let's not panic yet. Uh, let me, you know, i got to get my eraser right and erase this baby work over here. All right, let me put this over here. This is one way to do it. Again, if this doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. So what am I going to do now? I have, I have to wonder, are these answers to the question? Well, you know what? I, I definitely I don't want the cosine to be zero. So, so again, what does a cosine curve look like? The cosine curve looks like this over here. Well, what do I immediately know? I know at pi over 2, and any, you know, like 2 pi k mo, uh, addition onto that, would be equal to zero. So this is out of the question. Out of the question. Then the next thing becomes is, I wonder if the other one's out of the question. Well, what I know about any multiple of, uh, at least for the cosine, it's certainly non-zero, right? But what I want to do is, I want to go back and see if it makes any sense in the original problem. Now, certainly, you may be concerned about this, and I'm not done with the problem yet. I'm really kind of looking at this thing over here. And what I want to do is I just want to plug it in, all right? And so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the, you know, the numbers here. And, you know, it's, what are the numbers going to be? 0, 2 pi, 4 pi. I'm just in order multiples, right? I'm going forward by. You can go backwards, too, if you want. Not much difference. I'm not going to check them all. It's an infinite number to check. But 0, 2, 4, you know, 6, 8. You get the idea. 
Let's try zero. All right, I'm just going to, I'm just trying it out, see how it would work. I want to see if I can box this answer, by the way. And I'll get a feel for it pretty quickly, by the way. So sine is zero, zero. Cosine is zero is one, plus one, and that would be one. This worked out beautifully. And I think you could try two pi. The sine of two pi is zero. Cosine of two pi is one. One plus one. Wow, this works out. So this is the only answer to the question over here. All right? Now, I didn't do that. I did not do that. All right? What, what did I do? I want to point out what I did. What I did was I stopped thinking. And by the way, it's the easiest way to proceed. It's the smoking gun principle. Stop thinking. It's the obvious. So I'm, I, I looked at this, and I said to myself, let's stop thinking, and let me move forward as if I were a robot doing the problem. And what I did was I squared both sides. And when you square both sides, you do introduce troubles. And what are they going to be? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus 2 sine theta cosine, I'm squaring both sides, by the way, theta plus 1. Well, lo and behold, what do I notice? This is the number 1. Whoops, i sorry about that. I made a mistake. Part of that mistake is I'm just talking and not thinking about what I'm saying. But I catch it. It's equal to 1. So, you know, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. 1 is equal to 1. What do I get? 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to 0. Then I divide both sides by 2, and I get sine theta cosine theta is equal to 0. By the way, this is not only looking at someone with a smoking gun. Right now I'm saying the guy's admitting guilt. All right? What I mean by that, that looks too easy to do. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, what is, it looks so easy to do. And this is where I made my mistake. I said, oh, that's really simple. What is it going to be? It's a multiple of pi. And where am I getting that? Right over here. And I say, oh, this one's really easy to do. Theta is going to be pi over 2 plus pi k. And then I said, that's my answer. And it's wrong, all right? And certainly someone says, what are you thinking? Well, you know what? I didn't think. I didn't think about the original thing. But I want to point out, this one can't happen. And why is that? That's where the cosine function is taken on a zero. So this has to be crossed off. Now, someone says, what's wrong with this one over here? Well, you could write it down. And if I wrote that down, it would be zero pi, two pi, three pi, 4 pi, and you could check it. Now, someone says, where do you check it? I know it's tough. So I'm going to check it. It's sine theta over cosine theta. Plus 1 equals 1 over cosine theta. Now, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, you, you certainly could check it. And I want to point out 0 works out really, really nicely. The problem is pi does not work out nicely. All right? And someone says, why is that? If you tried pi you would get 1 equals minus 1. So this goes out of the story, all right? So then the next one, you say, oh, I wonder if 2 pi works. Well, if you plugged in 2 pi, hmm, what do you get? That would be 1, and the cos. oh, that works out beautifully. So this one's good. So what do I notice is they're multiples of 2 pi. So I'm going to say over here, this led to what's known as many extraneous answers. So the only answer over here is theta equals... 2 pi k. Let me go back and emphasize over here. Where did I write that down for you? Right over here. We're getting the same conclusion. And again, I apologize that I was flipping about the problem. And then I, I looked at the answer key and I said, you know what? I made a mistake somewhere. And that's when I said, oh, yeah, it was an extraneous one. But I didn't go, other, I didn't go on to explain myself. And that's why I'm preparing this video for you. And again, I really appreciate it. If you're listening to these things, and you have some understanding of what's being said, that's good. If you don't, though, I'll be honest with you, I'd be extremely happy if people did this work, even with the extraneous answers to put them down, even though they're wrong, I'm extremely happy people can go in that direction, by the way. That means they're going forward, they're coming forward with evidence, some of the evidence, though, is incorrect. What I mean by that, some of these things I'm writing down over here simply doesn't belong there. It's not there. The only thing 
in the end of this thing, is this thing over here, that theta is equal to 2 pi k. Thank you so much for listening, though. And I know that's confusing, but you know what? That's part of your educational process, and that lasts the rest of your lifetime, by the way.